Hello and welcome to another one of those videos of mine. Today we'll be looking at remote control technology and emulating remote controls with the Arduino. Because this is a fairly long topic, I will split this into two parts. The first part will be looking at infrared remote control technology. So first of all, you know, one of these. Quite familiar to you, you might be using it to change your channel on your TV or on your set-top box. How does it work? Well, luckily for you viewers, I have an old remote control which I have broken apart. And I can show you what's inside. So first of all, the most important part is this. Right at the top of the remote, I think that's a bit close for focus, but anyway, that is an infrared emitting LED. So this LED emits infrared light which is not visible to the human eyes. Funnily enough, an interesting quirk is that CCD and CMOS sensors seem to be relatively sensitive to it, so let me show you. You see that little flashing? That is the remote code being beeped out by this particular remote. So it's quite faint, but it is visible. If you ever needed to test if a remote control works, just point it in front of the camera and start firing away. So on this board, there's quite a few traces. There's uh, pattern traces in black, which are covered with a coating that prevents oxidation and they are they look like intermeshing fingers like this and what happens is the piece of rubber that's on the front which you push the buttons on this is actually just a piece of rubber you can just remove it from the remote itself and it has these little black elastomer dots on the back what these dots do is they short out across those fingers and activate the button so that actually sends the remote code on the back, you can see battery terminals, a capacitor for filtering the power, a transistor for switching the, um, the infrared LED on and off, uh, another two capacitors, uh, mainly for this particular yellow thing. This yellow thing is a ceramic resonator. This provides the reference frequency for the remote. And this, I believe, is a 455 kilohertz ceramic resonator. So when you push the button, this particular little black epoxy goop underneath there's a little chip in it it senses which button in the matrix has been pushed beeps out the code to the transistor in time with the output from the ceramic resonator it comes out the front as a blinking light so remotes themselves actually don't send um don't send their data in an on off pattern as such they actually modulate a 38 kilohertz um carrier with on and off transitions. So this LED isn't actually constantly on and off, it is actually blinking on and off 38,000 times a second to symbolize a, um, a pulse or it's off um, to symbolize some rest time in between pulses. As you will see later on, it's not actually the length of time that the infrared carrier is on that actually determines the data. The data is actually determined by the off period in between pulses. So people who play around with uh, remote control cars may be familiar with this as pulse position modulation. So there you go, that's how a remote works. So how can we go and emulate one of these remotes with our Arduino? Well, the first thing we need to do is actually go and try and capture these remote codes from the remote. Now, if you normally require a little bit of hardware to do this. What I've done is I've taken one of these. This is a QQ box, a cheap Chinese satellite receiver. I had this on hand and it has support for a remote control. You can see that little hole there labeled IR. Now, Unfortunately, it's not easy to do this in software, so we should probably do this in hardware. So opening up the chassis, that is the board inside, and you can see this here is a special type of uh, photo transistor for IR. This actually does sense 38 kilohertz carrier. So if it senses 38 kilohertz carrier, it outputs a low. If it doesn't sense 38 kilohertz carrier, it outputs a high. So this is distinctly different to what you will get from a real photo transistor. A real photo transistor will actually give you a 38 kilohertz output for a 38 kilohertz input and a random noise or maybe nothing or a low output for when there's a rest period. So that's one part of the equation solved. That's the actual sensing device I'll be using. So what I've done is I had hooked this up to USB power. That way it provides power for the photo transistor to receive. Point the remote at it and fire away. 
but we have to capture the data somehow and that's where this thing comes in. So this here some may recognize as the Postscope Basic 2 unit. It's a very cheap digital storage oscilloscope unit that uses the USB connection on a PC and um, allows you to capture waveforms at up to 200 kilohertz. So it doesn't have very large bandwidth but it's bandwidth sufficient for this particular purpose. So on the other end of course you plug in your USB to your machine and you clip on to the probe the, um, the photo transistor output and you push the buttons and you get something showing up on your screen. So let's, uh, let's bring up a few screenshots shall we. So this first screenshot here, this is actually showing you the pulse train that actually comes out of the um, of the phototransistor. So low indicates 38 kilohertz IR is present. Just note that not all remotes use a 38 kilohertz carrier tone. Some use 36, and some use another frequency altogether. However, most remotes use 38 kilohertz. So you can see there's a long pulse on, and then for the rest of it the pulses of on are equal widths. So the pulse itself does not carry the data. It is the timing between these pulses, whether the two pulses are close together or further apart that carries the data. So this is something analogous to pulse position modulation. So what can we do with this? First of all, export this data out. Write yourself a little nifty C program that decimates this data based on the voltage level. So I've chosen a voltage level of 1 volt to actually slice the data. If the voltage is less than 1 volt, it's a 1. If it's a, um, greater than 1 volt, it's a 0. And then we, uh, we time how many consecutive um, samples at 200 kilohertz sampling rate are either 1s, indicating that there is IR tone, or zero indicating that there is no IR tone and that results in a batch of data that looks like this so it's really really noisy as you can see the initial pulse is normally the same length but you can see there seems to be some sort of variance that's probably because of jitter in the sampling clock um, because this is not crystal locked in terms of its sampling frequency but anywho get this data into MATLAB make a plot of all the buttons all together and we get this. So this clearly exemplifies there's quite a lot of common data. There's a lot of data which is not unique to particular button presses. After all, a remote has only maybe 32 or 33 unique buttons and you can code that in a very small number of bits. Um, so if we just take a look at the graph, you can see that there's a lot of data where all the traces overlap. So it uh, odd numbers indicate IR on time, even numbers indicating IR off time. So you can see that the IR on off times are the same all the way up till sample number 36 when it first starts to change. So the important, uh, the important samples in terms of actually carrying information where the traces actually diverge, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 48, uh, 52, 54, 56, 58, 60, 64 and those are the only positions which matter. So you'll notice that they're all even numbers representing that it is a change in the time where the IA carrier is not present. So what can we do with this? We can digest all of this down into something that looks like this. So this is just a set of arrays which describe um, whether we are having a long period off at that time or a short period off at that time. So these are, well this represents the unique data for each button press. So armed with this we can now start to code something for the Arduino and make something that can emulate a remote control.